Hey, it's Hannah with Inhaler Radio Insight. We're here today at Madison Live with Fisco, and we're going to hear some tracks off of their new album, Hector. This one is called Mr. Rainmaker. Life completely soundless. Nobody knows him, but they will proceed to explain every detail about him. So we're here with Joey from Fisco, who is going to be performing here at Madison Live on February 26th. Make sure that you visit inhaler.com slash Fisco to get your tickets. You're going to want to join in. It's going to be a great show. And uh, we're going to hear from you and all of your bandmates. Yeah? Yeah. The whole, the whole gang will be there. <laughs> It's crazy. We're five piece and I was the only one that could make it work. So here we are. Here we are. Well, it's great to be talking with you, uh, Joey, here at Madison Live Theater. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your newest album. It's called Hector. Uh, It came out in 2022. And, you know, I think the first thing that fans will notice is that it it sounds very different from your previous works. And I'm kind of wondering where that sound came from and uh, why, what does it represent on this album? So for us, it just kind of, I guess it just represents a maturation, right? I, that's a real word. I looked it up one time. <laughs> um, just of our sound and kind of of the way that we listen to music, right? We've always listened to a lot of like classic music. Um, and then we had our pop phase as well. So like our old music is great and it's super fun, but we felt like right now the world kind of was in a weird place when we wrote it, obviously. And we kind of wanted to reflect that weird place that we were all in in this album so we kind of leaned heavily into that kind of psychedelic classic rock froggy fun so we just kind of let it ride yeah yeah and um so this album was obviously created before 2022 so the the world was in a weird place we had a global pandemic there was a lot of stuff going on with social social justice and um what, what kind of impact did that have on the album other than the sound do you think that it, it touched on the themes of the songs? Did it uh, change the way that you collaborated as a band um, and the way that you created the music? Yeah, so the first and most obvious thing was the pandemic for us because we couldn't get together. 
So this whole album was recorded separately from our homes and then sent to our guitar player, Nick, and he did all the mixing. Um, so that was a weird process because usually we'd show up and be like, hey, I've got this riff, and then we'd go. And this album was a little bit different where it'd be like, hey, I've got this riff. And you'd wait like a couple days, and someone would text you back like, yeah, it's pretty cool. And you'd wait a couple more days, and they'd be like, this is my thought. So it was this weird, elongated process. Uh, but I feel like actually at the end of the day it kind of led to this cool product because we had time to sit in it um, and tweak. And we didn't let that become perfectionism. You know, because sometimes when you have a long process like this, it becomes perfectionism. But we let it just be what it is and said, it's time. Let's throw it out there. Um, but as far as like where the world was affecting the album, this is a story, right? And it's a story of someone who struggles with mental health and all of these things that leads them down a pretty dark path. Um, and that was some stuff that we were kind of dealing with at the time. I had a family member who took his life to suicide, and I work in a school where there were students who have taken their lives to suicide even this year. Like, it is relevant, and it's real, and it's here. And I felt like, personally, it'd be a disservice to not touch on that in my art and in my music uh, because that's kind of how I process. Yeah, yeah, a way of processing the world around you, crazy things going on. So with that being said, um, is Hector, obviously is the title of the album, but is Hector a real person to you or is it more of a, you know, a representative person of multiple things? Right. I, I would say it's the latter. It's this, Hector is this kind of symbol to me of like this mental health issue that we are currently just marinating in. And it's not even just this country. It's like everywhere. Um, and a lot of it happened because of the pandemic, right? We're stuck inside all these things, but Hector kind of symbolizes that. And for me, this whole journey that Hector takes is kind of my optimistic outlook on where these people, you know, end, right? Kind of this idea of like, hey, there's a place afterwards and they're there and they're happy and they feel full, which is what obviously they were missing here. So it's kind of my way of coping and saying, this is where I want them to be. So that's where they are. So you would say, despite the dark themes of the album, it is an optimistic album. And um, well, first of all, is that right? And would you say that's reflected in the actual style of playing? I know today you're here on the piano. We're hearing very light staccato notes. Do you think that represents that optimism? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I'd say I'm not one who wants to like dive too deep into like, hey, what does this song mean? What does this song mean? What does this song mean? Because music is so personal, right? Like I want someone to listen to it and say, you know, I thought that meant that. And I go, that's wild, but I'm happy that that means that to you because that means something to you, right? So for me, this is optimistic. And if for somebody else, they listen to it, it makes them feel angry or sad or, or those things. I'm not going to, you know, write that off. Like, cool, that, that made you feel that way. Um, but yeah, it's, it's for me an optimistic outlook and the heavy classic rock sound kind of, I feel like, adds a layer of of energy to it because we didn't want to just sit in like doom and gloom kind of ramps it up a little bit and makes it I don't know for me it makes it more epic if that makes sense yeah I it the whole album kind of almost plays as like a rock opera it reminds me very much of Queen who who would you say was your busy, biggest musical influence in creating this yeah on this one we went really 60s 70s kind of like uh, nick our guitar player is really into like yes so we had like a lot of yes influence on this i love queen and the beatles and he loves the beatles as well and that played a big part but then we've got matt our other guitar player who loves muse like in that and they kind of all have these big visceral band sounds so we just said you know what let's let's go big let's push it as far as we can one because we had all this time it's like we can layer on layer on layer we're not going to play live for a year two years and two it just felt appropriate because this is such a big issue right that a big sound kind of played right into the hand of the themes yeah yeah I love that going big when you can right so uh but you're playing live here with uh with the rest of your band so how is this going to translate into a, a live performance uh, it's going to be like a theatrical performance. Like we're going to be having a lot of moving lights, fog, like all kinds of crazy things. Like you said, it's like a rock opera. And that's kind of how I like to vision it. It's, it's this opera. It's this story. And we want to take you through it, 
right? And this this live show isn't just the new stuff. We're going to play some of the old stuff too and the kind of sandwich the album right in the middle. Um, but yeah, when you hear this album live, it's going to be, it's big, it's, it's rock. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's great. And you know, just one more final question. What do you want your listeners, your fans to take away from this album or from the live performance? What do you, what do you want them to walk away with? I feel like just the idea that this life, and this is going to sound so big, but it's really not, <laughs> that like everybody's got their own stuff. And if we thought about that more often, I think we treat each other a lot better, right? I, we all get in our own heads of like, hey, I've got problems. Ugh. And I get that way too. But if we thought for a second about what other people are going through, I feel like we would treat everyone a little bit better because, and we all got stuff. And if we could just take on each other's stuff a little bit better, I think, I think we'd all be a little bit better. Most definitely. We, we've all got stuff. You've got some more music stuff for us. So we're going to head into your song, Hector. We're going to hear it. It's the title track. And uh, here we go with Hector from Joey with Fisco. Growing rate of suicide and never hearing how we're stopping to think why. And then we send our kids to class, they're learning things like mental math, but never learning how to cope when things get hard. They never have the time to think or talk about what makes them sink into their minds and phones and makes them feel so small. Would you listen up real quick? I know it's a global pandemic But this is a mental health crisis We should reassess He could see the ghost of a man that never found his road Every day he tries He can't close his eyes Between the sheets of his bed He's stuck inside of his head As he imagines another ride But he won't really like it when he's gone Inspector Hector, human lie detector He's making his wage as a psych professor And every day he would write his lectures But nobody was listening Hector Quick became a work defector And found some hours as a trash collector And every day he'd say, hi, I'm Hector Thank you. 
All right. Well, thank you so much, Joey, for joining Inhaler here in sight at Madison Live. It's been a great exclusive performance. If you liked what you heard, make sure you come on down to Fisco's live performance right here at Madison Live in Covington, Saturday, February 26. You can go to inhaler.com slash Fisco. That's P-H-Y-S-C-O uh, for tickets and more details. So come on me.